Hi, I'm Nicholas Lodge and would like to introduce you to my new Nicholas Lodge brand mold from Katie Sue Designs. This blackberry and oak leaf mold will create beautiful realistic leaves for both blackberries and also for oak leaves, for acorn to go with acorns. Um, during this presentation, I'm going to show you how I make the oak leaves, talking about different color variations and then how I color them and then how I assemble them. So let's get started. So first of all, when we are making um, this mold, obviously uh, you can see here on the packaging, we have, you know, like oak leaves and blackberry leaves could be made, especially oak leaves, uh, green, or they could be made obviously a creamy color, which is what I would normally recommend as a base to put on autumn sort of like shades, like fall shades, like oranges and browns and yellows. Um, so usually when I make the, um, the oak leaves, I'm going to be starting off with either a cream color paste or a green colored paste. All right. Um, I found that cream is a good base color because it's not as stark as white and it really is a good foundation when you're building those sort of autumn fall colors uh, on top of maple leaves and all different types of leaves. Now when we uh, color the paste I'm using just a cream color. So I would use a cream color. Um, I generally uh, recommend obviously for my Flower Pro as well as obviously for my um, other NL brand products where we're especially doing things we need to dry harder to use a petal paste, gum paste or flower modeling paste. So you just would color this with some cream colored gel and obviously then that turns the white into a nice cream color. When we are doing this, we're going to use the size guide. So size guide is part of my Flower Pro. And uh, obviously this is included with the uh, Flower Pro book, which a lot of you probably have already. And uh, so we're gonna use the size guide for measuring that paste. So when we make the, um, the acorn or oak leaves, we're going to uh, use a number six size for the small size one. So this would be a number six. So this is measured just like usually, one third below, two thirds above. So that would be a number six size. This would be a number seven size, which again would be one third below, two thirds above. That would be for the medium oak leaf. And then for the large size oak leaf, I'm gonna use actually a number eight small. So that wants to just go through your number eight size hole, okay? And that would be the uh, three sizes I'm gonna use. So six, seven, and then number eight small. I'm going to show you the larger leaf here. So if you are measuring multiple bowls of paste, let's say you're making three large leaves, just put the other two underneath your little cup to stop those drying. We're going to condition the gum paste or flour paste, uh, modeling paste with a little bit of vegetable fat, white vegetable fat or shortening. Just going to just condition this. And so what this is gonna do, is going to just relax the paste. This is a standard thing I do in all of my, uh, when I'm ever I'm making flowers or leaves. And uh, I do have a Flower Pro um, video which specifically deals with paste to use in my Flower Pro and also with my NL products. Now some of my NL products like my pine cone, you can use modified sugar paste or rolled fondant in those, but especially obviously things like leaves and that, we want them to be a little stronger. I would recommend, as I said, a gum paste, flower paste, petal paste. So I'm going to take my, this is my number eight small, and I'm going to make this into, just into a sausage sausage shape here. And this sausage shape wants to be about, approximately about two thirds of the length of the mold, all right? So this would relate to all three sizes. So it's about two thirds of the length. So I'm gonna then just dust that with a little bit of corn flour, corn starch with my little bag here. And then I'm gonna place that actually in the sort of middle of the mold, just sort of press it in slightly and then I'm actually going to use the back of my new Flower Pro Poinsettia. This is a wonderful uh, back to make vein in, uh, but also I use this now as a press. So you just put this on top, so the smooth side of this goes on top of the paste. We're just gonna press this down with your finger. So what this does, it just sort of basically pushes the paste into the mold initially. So you see how it's just it's almost flattened it into the mold. I'm going to then finish this off using a cosmetic sponge. Uh, so again, this is the way that I make most of my leaves and petals. And you see what I'm doing here is I'm now working the edge of this so that we get the nice thin edge. Because the difference between using molds and using cutters is typically with cutters, we can of course roll the paste out thin uh, by hand or using a pasta machine. But here you see how I'm actually using my cosmetic sponge just to pull the paste in to the mold here like this. So then we'll get this sort of thin edge. And this is what makes these leaves look more realistic and not sort of too heavy. So you're just gonna press this in with your cosmetic sponge. Then I'm going to use my finger and my cosmetic sponge. Obviously you can do it with your right finger and your cosmetic sponge or left finger and your cosmetic sponge. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna sort of create 
like a slight little ridge. Because making leaves in a traditional method on like a grooved board, uh, we actually have like a little ridge here, but this just gives us a little bit of body here to put the wire into. Now for the um, large and the medium leaves, we're going to use 26 gauge wire. I'm using white wire here because I'm going to be coloring, obviously we have a pale colored paste. So generally when you're using white or pastel colors, you always want to use white wire. And then for the small size leaf, we would just use a 28 gauge wire, which is a little skinnier. So 28 for the small, 26 for the large and the medium. So I'm going to take some little bit of egg white. So I'm just going to dip my uh, wire into my egg white. And I'm going to now, because there is a little groove here, you can see, so all we're going to do now is just going to just take the wire and just going to thread the wire into here. And you just want to feel this sort of tickle your finger and it's going to go in into the ridge about two thirds of the way into the ridge. So the, actually the wire is about here onto the, onto here. All right. Um, so this is pretty easy to do and you just sort of like when you put the wire in, you'll feel, you actually will feel the wire sort of tickle your finger and it's going to go into your leaf like so. And then um, an optional step is to use the poinsettia back to actually vein um, the oak leaves. Um, on my Blackberry uh, video as well, I showed how to use the same, same technique. So what we do is you line this up and you want to line it up so you can see how the, the V shape here, this V shape, wants to be lined up with the wire. And then the top of the leaf will go where the top of the oak leaf is. And then just using your fingers, just going to walk down the mold like this. All right, so just go up and down your mold like so. So when you take this off, you can see how it's going to actually vein the back of the leaf as well. And you have this beautiful vein in. So then we're just going to just flex the mold and your leaf will come out. And see here you have a fabulous um, oak leaf. All right. Now just going to pinch around the bottom of the leaf. And then we're going to just soften the edge slightly. Now, uh, when we soften the edge, there are two ways to do this. We can either actually use the small little mini pad or a classic flower pad. So this is just a mini pad here, or we can actually use the back of the mold if you don't have a pad. So you're going to put this towards the edge and I'm actually going to hold my uh, stick here at an angle because I don't want to really get rid of too much of the veining. So if you do this right on the edge, you see how you hold your stick at an angle like this. And you're just going to just roll and you can actually even just use the, especially when I'm doing the smaller leaves like this size, I would actually do this with the little needle tool end, all right? On the larger ones here, you can do just do this with a shaft of the tool. So literally, you're just going to do this, not on every leaf, on, on every part of the leaf, but just sort of here and there. So you're just going to get a little bit of sort of movement onto the leaf, okay? Um, if you were doing this onto your silicone mat, you're just going to place this onto the silicone mat. And again, you're just going to just roll this around the edge, just here and there, just to give a little bit of softening. Now to make um, leaves look realistic in the fall or autumn time, uh, you know, often things start to deteriorate. Obviously you have little bug bites, caterpillar bites and things. So um, I'm using here a number three piping tip or nozzle. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the piping tip and I'm just gonna make some like little bites in the edge. So you see how you're actually gonna make like a little bite in the edge here. You can also do like, for example, like two, two little holes when you pull that little piece out of the middle here. You see how it's gonna look like almost like a little caterpillar bite. But, um, and then we can also take your, on the soft side of the pad, I'm gonna use actually the pointed end of the companion tool, and I'm just gonna make some little tiny dots on here. So this is almost gonna give you that sort of like disease look to the leaf. These are just all things that make it realistic. On my Blackberry um, video, my YouTube Blackberry video, which is part of this same mold, you will see how I use actually a stencil or wood burner and actually burn the little bug bites and burn little holes into the leaves. And that's also a really fun technique to do as well. So once you get the leaf to this stage, we're then going to hollow it. So I'm going to use the uh, pointed end, just hold that there and just going to use really the shaft of the and again, on you know, when we use this tool, this is a wonderful little tool, the companion tool is a ball tool on the end, which I show when I make the blackberry flowers. We have the shaft and then we have the needle. So again, when you're working on a smaller project, like for example here on the small oak leaf, I would use the needle end like this. When you're working on obviously a larger project, you can use more of the shaft just because it's a little bit bigger. We can also just bend the leaf to give a little bit of shape to it. All right, so you see how this is gonna give you a leaf, the shape. And then we would then pop that onto um, some crepe foam just to dry to give it a nice natural shape. Um, we need to leave the leaves to dry for about two to three hours depending on humidity and what type of paste you're using.
So in addition to the oak leaves, you will also need to make some acorns. So this is my nuts and berries mold, uh, part of my Nicholas Lodge original collection. And uh, on this mold, obviously, this is the blackberry cavity to make blackberries, as shown in the blackberry video. And also, this is the acorn. So this mold will actually make two different types of acorns. Uh, these are slightly sort of squatter ones. These are made in two halves in the mold, following my directions on my YouTube video for the acorns and blackberries. And then um, the other acorns uh, are the elongated ones, which actually those are made freehand, the top hard, and then the cap is made actually using the little acorn cup mold. So remember, there's a separate YouTube, um, which was actually uh, to designated to show how to make the walnuts and obviously the blackberries and the acorns. So those would need to be made, and then uh, once obviously the leaves are dry, we would then move on to the next step, which is going to be the coloring. So now we're going to move on to the fun part, which is going to be the coloring. So I'm going to first of all use some brown floral tape. Um, so generally I would use a brown on especially autumn colored leaves. Um, you can also use a moss green, especially if you're doing green ones, okay? But anyway, so you're going to start your floral tape. This is half width brown floral tape. You're going to start off about an inch, about two and a half centimeters down the wire. I'm going to go around a couple of times with my floral tape. Going to just slide this up to the bottom of the wire so you see how what this is going to do up to the bottom of the leaf. So you're just going to slide up there so you're going to get a nice neat start. Going to come down about one inch, about two and a half centimeters. So obviously you do this on all of your leaves, all right? When you're doing the, um, obviously here, the green leaves, you could use the brown or you could use the, um, obviously the moss green color. So first of all, I'm going to show you the autumn colored leaves. Um, so I'm going to use here color palette. So I've got, first of all, like a lemon yellow and an autumn gold color. So this is going to be then I'm going to move on to an orange and then I'm going to move on to sort of a ruby color um, just to sort of build up my base fall color. And uh, I use this technique on a lot of my fall leaves. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to just take a little bit of the color here. And uh, of course, you can put gloves on when you do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use the yellow and these obviously colors will also work very well onto air drying clays, uh, like the hardy clay as well. But you're just gonna just gonna go in with a sort of a base color of the yellow. So I'm just gonna put just a little bit of the yellow. So this gives me almost like a foundation, okay? And then this color here is called autumn gold, which is a uh, obviously a nice autumn fall color. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the autumn gold here. Now, of course, if you were doing, say, 12 leaves, you do the yellow on all of them, and then you go on to the next color. You can use separate brushes, or because we're blending the color, you can just use the same brush. What I'm going to do here is I'm now going to go in with the, so you see this is a slightly sort of darker color here. I'm just going to put in some just little sort of shades of color here with the, remember the back, and the back pretty much is going to be done in the same color as we have on the front here. And we're going to just going to put a little, color onto here. We're going to then put a little bit of orange onto the top here. You see I'm just blending the orange into here like so. We'll just do this on the back as well. So here you have a little bit of orange just showing you this on a couple of the leaves. And you don't want to sort of make them all the same because you want obviously that nice um, sort of autumn shading. But this just shows you how you build up the color. And, as I explained in the beginning, using starting off with obviously a um, a cream color is a really good foundation. I'm then going to take some ruby. All right, so ruby is obviously this dark red color. And now this is beautiful when you add this on the edge of the orange because what it will actually do it will intensify your orange. So you see how your orange it gives a lot of pop. So when I do things like say Chinese lanterns, I would dust them orange and then I would add the red onto the edge of it. And here we're just going to just put a little bit of the and then we can go in with the... So now I'm going to take just a little bit of chocolate. I'm going to put a little bit of chocolate brown. Don't overdo the chocolate because if you use too much of it, it's going to start to look very sort of muddy and dirty, but just a little bit of brown here. So a little touch of brown here, just on the leaves, just sort of here and there. And you can almost like go in to emphasize where you have your little bug bites as well with a little bit of brown. And then I will finish to have a little bit of, this is a plum color. So again, just this is going to give just a nice, just sort of like where we have the yellows, the plum looks really nice, like more on the sort of yellowy color side. 
But you see how you just, it's really fun to do this and obviously you just sort of start to blend your colors. And then normally I take just a little tiny bit of green because um, although this is autumn time, the leaves you usually, like if they're still on the tree and they're changing color, they still have just a little tiny bit of green in them. So you're just gonna put just a little touch of green just right at the bottom here. It just sort of helps to just give a little bit of life to the, to the leaf like that. So that would be sort of how we would build up your uh, beautiful fall colors on your warm colors on your um, leaves. Now when you're doing the, um, when we're doing the green um, oak leaf, I'm just going to basically use a moss green over this. So this is just going to be a darker moss green really over the central area of this. But you can see the lovely, um, obviously veining onto the back of the leaf. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of the chocolate. I'm just going to put just a little touch of chocolate onto there. And that's really all I need on this one here. Little chocolate highlight just down the center of the leaf. And that will give me my color. So that's sort of how we do the basic coloring on the leaves. Now, um, when we're steaming the leaves, we're going to use a steamer. And um, in the fall or autumn time, um, obviously when the leaves, they start to lose their natural luster. So when a leaf is obviously green, it's typically shiny. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to just pass the leaf through the steam here like this and what this is going to do is going to set the powder you see how it's going to set the powder but what i'm going to do is i'm going to just leave the leaves like this i'm not going to actually lacquer or glaze them that i would often do because uh, if you watch my um, blackberry segment in the blackberry leaves i would do that and on the uh, green leaves here you would then again steam these and then these ones, because they're obviously, if the leaves are green, that would be during, say, the spring, the summer time, uh, the leaves are going to be more shiny. So then what we can do there is you can, if you wish to, you can just spray that with a little bit of spray lacquer. So if you just lightly spray that with lacquer, just leave it to dry a little bit and then do some spray lacquer on there or leaf glaze, and that will make that leaf stay a little shinier. So once we have obviously uh, put the color and we've steamed the leaves, just let them dry for a little bit and... Um, then we're going to start off. So I'm going to start off with a, uh, this is a 22 gauge wire. Okay, so, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just going to take two leaves. I'm going to start off with the small uh, leaves here. I'm just going to sort of bend one to the right, one to the left slightly, almost like little rabbit's ears. I'm going to take a 22 gauge wire here, and then I'm going to take my floral tape and just going to start here on the end. Now, when I'm doing things like uh, dogwood branches, cherry blossom branches, uh, acorns and oak leaves, what I do is want to make like a natural bark effect. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down with my floral tape and then I'm going to go up. And you don't want to really do this too carefully because you want this almost like natural look on the floral tape. So you see how you're actually going to sort of just build the floral tape up like this. And then um, what we're going to do is uh, then we'll use, you can use like a pair of scissors or some wire cutters and just gonna like just clip this. So what you're actually doing here, this is gonna give your um, actually like almost like a branch, like a wood texture. So it will actually will texture the uh, this the branch. So we're gonna put this on, and then I'm gonna take then my. So now I'm gonna put in two leaves here, and I'm gonna put in a acorn here. So I'm just gonna put in a single acorn. So obviously depending on how you're gonna use these, you can do different uh, configurations. So I'm just gonna have this come in a little bit to the side here, like so. And then I'm gonna take some more floral tape. And then with my floral tape here, again, I'm just gonna come down. But you see, you're just gonna do this up, down and up. So you do four or five times, you know, depending on how, and as you go down, you can make this a little thicker. So you could usually do like five times with the floral tape. And you can either do this once it's finished or as you go, you can use your, Let's say you can use a pair of scissors here, but what we're actually doing here is we're just chopping into the floral tape, and this actually gives you the effect of like bark, okay? So it's a really nice, you can see a very nice natural way to give you that sort of, uh, so on things like a cherry, when I do cherry, I use this. And then here I'm going to now take my three leaves, so I'm gonna sort of build those almost like in a sort of a group like this. And then I'm gonna put two acorns in here, so I'm just going to pop my acorns in here. And remember on the, on the uh, I have a video which is designated just to show how to do obviously the acorns and the blackberries. And then you're just going to just start with the floral tape. 
And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add two more 22 gauge wires. So what this is going to do, this is just going to strengthen the stem. Because if you're going to use this with other autumn fall flowers, like a dahlia or, um, you know, other berries and things. So again, you're going to just sort of come down, up, down, up. And usually I only do this thicker part where it's uh, going to be visible, you know. So if you were going to use this in, for example, into a cake, uh, if this was going into a posy or a tube, uh, into a straw, into the cake, you know, this part here would just be obviously the part that would go into the cake, and then your acorns would come out, or obviously if you're wiring this with other flowers. But um, of course you could also just uh, thicken this all the way down to however long you want it to do, and then you could then, uh, once you have done that, you can trim this to the desired thickness. And again, just going to come in here, we're going to just use your scissors here just to sort of texture this like so. Then you see how you're going to get your sort of your beautiful sort of uh, acorn spray here. When we do the, just on this one here, just to show you this, obviously so you'll see the difference in the sort of color. This would be done with obviously just using the um, same technique, but using the, I'm going to use here just a medium leaf here. I'm just going to just use a single wire here. It's going to come down, up, and I'm just going to add a, an acorn here. So remember, these acorns are made with um, freehand tops and then using the acorn cup um, for the bottom here. So again, just going to come down. So this would be obviously an acorn if you were going to use acorns, which this would be lovely to use. Like in the United States, we do a lot of grooms cakes, which obviously are very popular even now in Europe and the UK. But uh, so if you're doing a sort of a, you know, a grooms cake with like outdoorsy um, theme on it, you know, like acorns could be used, obviously not just in the autumn time, they could be used sort of any time of the year. It's nice for uh, mixed with other, other uh, flowers. And then we're going to just take the, the other ones here. So these are just going to just come out. So I'm just going to do this more in a sort of traditional sort of spray, just with three leaves and three acorns. But of course I haven't, on this one here, I've just made medium and large leaves, just so you can sort of see the scale of the leaves. And then again, just going to just tape down with your floral tape here. Just going to texture this. So remember, you can texture as you go, or you can just texture once you've got everything completed here, like this. So here you have your beautiful acorns with your uh, oak leaves for autumn time, oak leaves for spring and summer. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. You'll have a lot of fun working with my Nicholas Lodge brand and Flower Pro products. So remember the video for making the acorns and the blackberries is obviously a separate video. This one just deals with my oak leaf uh, components. But uh, I hope you'll have fun and look forward to seeing you soon.